Far below the turquoise shimmer of the Atlantic, where sunlight fades to black, a silent monster sleeps. North of Puerto Rico, the seafloor plunges into a jagged chasm, the Puerto Rico Trench. It's the deepest point in the Atlantic Ocean, more than five miles down, a place where the Earth quite literally folds under its own weight. Two vast tectonic plates meet here, the North American and the Caribbean, grinding, twisting, and locking together in a slow-motion struggle that's lasted for millions of years. Each passing day, pressure builds. And when that pressure finally breaks, it won't be quiet. Scientists say this hidden trench could unleash a megaquake powerful enough to rattle the Caribbean, rewrite coastlines, and send walls of water racing toward the shores in minutes. But the most chilling part? It's done it before. Centuries ago, the ground here convulsed and the sea turned violent. Towns vanished, ships capsized, and survivors spoke of waves that came out of nowhere. Yet after all these years of eerie calm, the trench remains locked. Its last major rupture more than 200 years ago. What happens when that silence breaks again? Beneath the Caribbean's calm blue surface, the earth is at war with itself. Here, along the Puerto Rico Trench, the North American plate dives beneath the Caribbean plate, but not in a clean, downward motion. It's twisted, crooked, and violent. One side slides down while both scrape sideways, a deadly combination scientists call oblique subduction. That grinding motion locks the plates together, storing unimaginable amounts of energy. Every centimeter of motion that can't escape builds like pressure in a wound spring. And this spring hasn't released in centuries. Satellites now detect subtle movements across the region, fractions of an inch each year. That may not sound like much, but in geological terms, it's like watching a ticking clock on borrowed time. The deeper sensors tell the same story, tension, rising from miles beneath the seafloor, and there's something else. Unlike most subduction zones, this one doesn't just sink, it tears sideways too. That means when it breaks, it won't act like a single fault. It'll shatter along multiple fractures, amplifying the quake and sending shock waves racing through the ocean. The last time this much stress built up, Puerto Rico's coastline changed forever. So the question haunting researchers now isn't if it will break, it's how much of it will go when it does. Long before satellites and seismographs, the people of Puerto Rico learned the trench's power the hard way. In 1787, the ground began to shudder beneath the island. Walls cracked. Bells rang in the capital of San Juan. No one understood what was happening until the sea itself began to pull away from the shore. Moments later, it came roaring back. A tsunami surged inland, tearing boats from their moorings and flooding the coast. Historians now believe that Quake reached a magnitude as high as 8.2, a disaster from a time before disaster science. Eighty years later, it struck again. The year was 1867. Two powerful quakes rocked the Virgin Islands, followed by a wall of water that swept through harbors and villages. Ships were tossed onto land. Families fled for higher ground as the ocean turned into chaos. And in 1918, another tremor, magnitude 7.2, slammed into Puerto Rico's western coast near Aguadilla. The quake was followed by a sudden, eerie silence, and then a wave more than 20 feet high. Entire neighborhoods were swallowed, over a hundred lives lost in minutes. For centuries, this trench has awakened without warning, reshaping shorelines, rewriting maps, and vanishing into quiet again. But here's the chilling pattern. Each major quake comes after decades of calm, and we're now living in the longest quiet stretch the trench has ever recorded. The last time it erupted with full force, electricity didn't even exist. When it does again, our modern world won't be ready. For decades, the Puerto Rico Trench seemed quiet, but silence isn't safety, it's buildup. In recent years, that calm has begun to crack. In 2014, a magnitude 6.4 quake struck north of Puerto Rico, a sharp reminder that the trench was still alive. But the real warning came five years later, late 2019. A swarm of earthquakes began rattling the island, hundreds of tremors in just weeks. On January 7, 2020, it happened. A magnitude 6.4 quake 
hit before dawn. Homes crumbled, power plants failed, and the island plunged into darkness. For days, aftershocks kept people sleeping outside, afraid their walls would fall in. And that wasn't the end. Over the next few years, smaller quakes continued to rattle the region, like the heartbeat of something stirring below. In 2024, a 5.6 tremor was felt across both Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. By mid-2025, the shaking had grown constant. Two 5.7 quakes just weeks apart knocked out power across parts of the island. In August, another quake shook the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico's eastern coast. Again, no casualties, but a pattern impossible to ignore. Seismologists now say the trench's stress is at a critical point. The plates are locked tighter than ever. Every small quake that doesn't release that energy means it's still building, quietly, invisibly, and that's what makes it so dangerous, because when it finally gives way, it won't start small. The next rupture could be the one that breaks the silence for centuries. Picture this. It's just after 9 a.m. along Puerto Rico's northern coast. The sun is bright, the sea perfectly calm. And then, the ocean begins to hiss. In seconds, the ground lurches sideways, buildings sway violently, cracking apart. Roads split open, power lines snap like twigs. The shaking doesn't stop. It grows. Three minutes of chaos as the entire crust of the region heaves upward and tears. A section of seafloor nearly the size of Puerto Rico thrusts upward by several meters, displacing billions of tons of water. That's when the ocean turns deadly. Within minutes, walls of water surge toward shore. Waves higher than palm trees racing toward San Juan, Loiza, and the Virgin Islands. There's no time to escape. Boats are hurled inland. Cars and debris churn in the flood. Entire neighborhoods vanish beneath the surge. Scientists warn that an 8.0 or greater rupture in the Puerto Rico trench would generate a tsunami capable of striking multiple nations in under an hour, from the Dominican Republic to the Bahamas, even reaching Florida's coastlines. In the open ocean, it would be nearly undetectable, but near land, it would rise into a monster. Power grids, ports, airports, all would fail within moments. The island's steep terrain could trigger secondary disasters, landslides, collapsing roads, and isolated towns cut off from rescue. Communication lines would go dark. It wouldn't just be a disaster, it would be a humanitarian crisis spanning nations, and all of it could begin without a single second of warning. Despite everything we know about the Puerto Rico Trench, the question remains the same. Are we ready? The truth is only partly. Puerto Rico now sits under one of the most advanced seismic networks in the Caribbean. Sensors deep in the ocean floor send real-time data to laboratories in Mayaguez and San Juan. Satellites track even millimeters of ground movement. And tsunami buoys stand watch across the Atlantic, waiting for the first hint of a rising wave. But preparedness isn't just technology, it's people. Most residents have never lived through a truly major quake. Evacuation routes fade under vegetation, drills are rare, and many coastal communities still rely on warning sirens that might not even sound if power is lost. Experts warn that when the next rupture hits, the seconds that follow will decide who lives and who doesn't. That's why scientists are pushing harder than ever, mapping the trench, modeling tsunami spread, and studying how stress transfers along the fault. Every new discovery brings a small piece of clarity, but also a sobering reality. The longer the silence lasts, the more energy builds beneath our feet. The Puerto Rico Trench is quiet, for now. But silence here has never meant safety. One day that silence will break and the ocean will rise again. So, here's the question only you can answer. If the ground started to move tomorrow, would your family know what to do? Let me know in the comments what you think. Is the Atlantic's greatest earthquake overdue? Or are we just hearing the planet breathe before the next roar? And if you want to stay ahead of the world's shift in geology, hit subscribe and join us as we uncover the forces reshaping Earth itself.